Hello my friends, and welcome back to the Ukando TV channel. The first step in the process is the use of a magnet lifter. This machine is responsible for lifting the steel coils and moving them to the next stage of the production line. After the steel coils are lifted, they are transported to the edge milling machine. This machine is used to remove the burrs and smooth out the edges of the coils. It helps in achieving precise dimensions and prepares the coils for the subsequent steps. The pre-bender machine is used to pre-bend the edges of the steel coils. This process helps in forming the shape of the pipe and ensures that the edges are ready for the next stage of the manufacturing process. The infeeder machine is responsible for feeding the steel coils into the GECO press bending machine. It ensures a continuous and controlled supply of the coils, facilitating the efficient bending process. The GECO press bending machine is a crucial step in the manufacturing process. It bends the steel coils into the desired shape of the pipe. The machine uses hydraulic pressure to form the steel coils into a J shape, then into a C shape, and finally into an O shape. This process ensures the desired curvature and diameter of the pipe. Turning transfer car. Once the steel coils are bent, they are transferred to the turning transfer car. This car rotates the bent coils and prepares them for the next steps of the process. The tack welding machine is used to temporarily weld the edges of the bent coils together. This welding is not the final weld, but it holds the shape of the pipe during subsequent processes. The inside welding machine is responsible for welding the longitudinal seam of the pipe. It uses a welding process to join the edges of the bent coils together, ensuring a strong and secure bond. After the inside welding is completed, the back bead cutting machine removes excess welding material and creates a smooth and consistent inner surface of the pipe. This step helps to improve the overall quality and appearance of the pipe. The outside welding machine is used to weld the external surface of the pipe. It applies the welding process to join the edges of the bent coils on the outer surface, creating a continuous and strong weld. The away machine, also known as the impending machine, is used to remove the excess material from the welded pipe. It cuts off the excess length of the pipe and ensures the desired dimensions and specifications are achieved. The end-facing machine is responsible for trimming and squaring the ends of the pipe. It ensures that the ends are perfectly flat and perpendicular to the pipe's axis. After the pipes are trimmed, a washing device may be used to clean the pipes. This helps to remove any contaminants or debris on the surface, ensuring a clean and smooth finish. X-ray test machine. The final step in the manufacturing process is the use of an X-ray test machine. This machine examines the welds of the pipe to detect any potential defects or imperfections. It ensures the structural integrity and quality of the finished steel pipe.
The first step in the manufacturing process is the creation of the shovel's blank. Steel sheets are used to punch out the initial shape of the shovel. This blank serves as the starting point for shaping the shovel into its final form. Once the blank is ready, it undergoes a series of transformative steps. Initially, the blank is heated to make it more malleable. This heat treatment allows for easier shaping of the steel. Pressure is then applied using a hydraulic machine which gradually molds the blank into a shovel. This process ensures that the shovel is formed with precision and accuracy. After the pressing stage, the freshly formed shovel is immersed in water. This quenching process helps to temper the steel enhancing its strength and durability. It also aids in stabilizing the structure of the shovel, making it more resistant to wear and tear. With the shovel portion of the shovel now complete, the focus turns to the surface finishing. The shovel plate undergoes sandblasting, which involves the use of fine abrasive particles propelled at high speeds to remove any impurities or irregularities on the surface. Following sandblasting, the shovel plate is varnished, this protective coating not only enhances the shovel's appearance, but also provides resistance against corrosion and moisture. The varnish acts as a barrier, safeguarding the shovel from environmental factors that could potentially degrade its quality over time. The final stage of the manufacturing process involves attaching the shaft to the shovel, thus completing the assembly of the shovel. The shaft, made of solid wooden material, is firmly attached to the shovel, ensuring a strong and reliable connection. This step requires precision and attention to detail to guarantee that the shovel is properly aligned and structurally sound. The first step in the concrete pipe production process is to create a steel cage that reinforces the pipe. A cage welding machine is utilized to produce the cage, which consists of a series of steel bars welded together to form a cylindrical structure. This cage provides strength and stability to the concrete pipe. Once the steel cage is ready, the next step is to position the mold into the excavation hole. The mold, typically made of metal or fiberglass, is designed to shape the concrete into the desired pipe dimensions. It is placed securely in the hole, ensuring stability during the pouring and curing processes. After the mold is properly positioned, the steel cage is carefully placed inside it. The cage should be centered and aligned to ensure uniform distribution of reinforcement throughout the pipe. The cage provides structural integrity and reinforcement, enhancing the strength of the final product. To ensure proper compaction and uniform distribution of the concrete, core vibration is applied. To ensure proper compaction and uniform distribution of the concrete, core vibration is applied.
After the concrete is properly compacted, the mold is pressed and fixed in position. Following the fixing of the mold, additional pressing and vibration are applied to shape the concrete into a pipe. This process helps eliminate any remaining air voids, ensuring the integrity and durability of the final product. The pressing and vibration actions also aid in achieving a smooth inner surface of the pipe. With the mold fixed and the pressing head applied, the concrete undergoes another round of pressing and vibration. This step ensures that the concrete achieves the desired shape and density, and any remaining voids or inconsistencies are eliminated. Once the concrete has been properly compacted and shaped, the pressing head is removed from the top of the mold. This step allows for easier extraction of the mold from the hole and the subsequent demolding of the concrete pipe. After removing the pressing head, the mold containing the freshly formed concrete pipe is carefully lifted out of the hole. Special equipment, such as cranes or forklifts, may be used to safely extract the mold without causing any damage to the pipe. Once the mold is lifted out, the concrete pipe is demolded. Demolding is a critical step in the concrete pipe manufacturing process. After the mold is lifted out of the hole, the concrete pipe is carefully separated from the mold. This is typically done by applying releasing agents or lubricants to the inner surface of the mold to facilitate the easy removal of the pipe. Demolding requires precision and care to avoid any damage to the freshly formed concrete pipe. Specialized tools and equipment, such as hydraulic or mechanical demolding systems, may be used to safely extract the pipe from the mold. Once the concrete pipe is successfully demolded, the mold can be prepared for reuse. The mold is thoroughly cleaned, removing any residual concrete or debris. It is inspected for any signs of wear or damage, and necessary repairs or maintenance are carried out. The mold is then ready to be used again in the production of additional concrete pipes. Finished concrete pipe in stock. This traditional method of pot making showcases the craftsmanship of artisans who work diligently to create functional and durable aluminum utensils. The first step in the manual aluminum pot production process is the collection of aluminum cans. The sorted cans are then subjected to a melting process, which is overseen by a master craftsman. The craftsman's expertise is essential in monitoring the melting process to ensure that the aluminum is heated to the appropriate temperature and melted down to extract the raw material. After preparing the mold, the molten aluminum is poured into the mold. The mold has a hole in the middle, which will form the cavity of the pot. When aluminum is poured, it flows into the mold, filling the cavity and forming the desired pot shape. The master craftsman closely monitors the process, ensuring that the molten aluminum is poured evenly and smoothly into the mold. Remove excess aluminum in the mold. The craftsman uses specialized tools to carefully trim and remove unwanted parts or rough edges from the pot.
The first step involves preparing the pan's body, which is made of stainless steel 1810, a high-quality material known for its durability and corrosion resistance. The steel is carefully shaped into a rounded form, similar to the shape of a frying pan. Once the pan body is formed, it undergoes a process to create a non-stick surface. This is achieved by applying a special non-stick coating, made of Teflon the non-stick coating prevents food from sticking to the surface, making cooking and cleaning easier. Diameter ranging from 12 to 40 centimeters, Le Menage offers frying pans in a variety of sizes to cater to different cooking requirements. After applying the non-stick coating, the exterior surface of the frying pan is sandblasted. Sandblasting involves propelling fine particles at high speed onto the surface, resulting in a textured finish. As mentioned earlier, the raw material used in the production of Le Corps Menage frying pans is stainless steel 18 tenths. To add a touch of color and style, the frying pan's exterior is painted using food-safe paint. The painting process is done meticulously, ensuring an attractive finish that complements the pan's design. After painting, the frying pans go through a drying process to ensure that the paint adheres properly and becomes resistant to chipping or peeling. In addition to traditional non-stick coatings, some frying pans from Le Corps Menage feature a ceramic non-stick surface. Once the non-stick coating, whether traditional or ceramic, is applied, the frying pans undergo a curing process. Finally, the handle of the frying pan is securely attached using rivets. This ensures a strong and durable connection between the pan body and the handle, allowing for safe and convenient handling during cooking.